Today we're going to show you how QSC can easily scale the Microsoft Teams room experience into a high value space like this executive boardroom using an intuitive suite of resources, software innovations, and optimization tools. Let's go over the physical components first. First, the Teams Room compute device is running the Microsoft Teams Room software and is also connected to the Room Control Console, in this case, the Logitech Tap. The QSIS core is connected to this PC through a single USB cable, which delivers all the room's processed audio, including the audio from the Sennheiser Team Connect Ceiling 2 microphone. This same USB cable also delivers the conference video from the native QSIS PTZ cameras to the Teams compute device. The QSIS core is also delivering audio signal to the QSC SPA series amplifier and the Acoustic Design series loudspeakers, as well as processing the control for all the audio, video, and environmental pieces in the room. The QSIS core can also present a room control interface on the Logitech tap. So, in addition to all the expected Teams room controls, you can also provide the users with controls of the environmentals, cameras, video routing, etc., all on the same display device. This Teams experience comes to us through resources that are available for systems running QSIS Designer software version 9.0 or higher. This suite includes QSIS software components for Teams rooms, a control license bundle, design template, and a lot more. We've rethought these elements to help simplify the design and deployment process for these high value spaces. So, keep a room like this in mind as we go to our computer and look at each of these elements and how they work together to make this all possible. Nate? Thanks, Patrick. Let's start with the QSIS Control for Microsoft Teams application, which is a standalone software that gets installed on the Microsoft Teams Room PC. This is what allows us to push the QSIS UCI to the Teams console device. Once it's installed, you don't need to do anything else with it, but it's a critical piece of this solution. Next is the QSIS feature license for Teams Room. We've bundled both our scripting engine feature license and the UCI deployment feature license into a single SKU to make it easier for people to deploy them together. A QSIS core needs both of these licenses active to run the Teams Room components, so we just package them together. In fact, if your core already has a scripting engine feature license and a UCI deployment feature license, you don't need this QSIS for Teams feature license at all. The only thing worth noting is that this solution also needs a software-based Dante feature license installed. Now, the only reason that's not bundled in the QSIS for Teams license is because nearly every new core already includes an 8x8 software-based Dante license. But if you're installing this on an older core, you'll need to upgrade it with a software-based Dante license if it doesn't have one already. Next is the Microsoft Teams sample design file. You may have used one of our conference sample design files in the past, but this sample design file for Microsoft Teams is a little different. Its step-by-step -step presentation is user-friendly, and more importantly, its audio signal flow and processing settings meet Microsoft Teams room certification. We highly recommend using this design file, but if you choose not to, you should ensure that its signal integrity and gain structure is maintained. Otherwise, your design may not meet those performance expectations. In fact, most of these components carry an exclamation mark that warns you about making any changes. On the other hand, items marked with this less intimidating icon may be edited based on your room's needs, such as adding more cameras or video bridge outputs. There are seven easy steps to complete. Start off by listing whatever clever name your company has given this meeting space, followed by selecting which loudspeaker type and models you're using in the room, which automatically applies QSC loudspeaker voicing. Next, input the IP address of your Sennheiser TCC2 microphone, which you can get from the Sennheiser Control Cockpit application that you use to install that microphone panel. Don't forget to select the name of the TCC2 device here and the name of its Dante Audio Out channel, as defined by your setup of that device in the cockpit application. Critically, the TCC2 also needs to receive a return AEC reference channel from QSIS, so you'll need to clearly label yours with a unique name here. Once you've named that Dante channel, you'll have to open your Dante controller application and subscribe this AEC reference channel of the TCC2 in question to the Dante audio flow that you just named. 
Step five is to enter the IP address of the PC that is running the Microsoft Teams Room application. And also to select the UCI in your design that you want to be displayed within its associated control software. By default, we've named this Room Controls. Under the hood, the Room Controls UCI is already linked to a new QSIS component called the Microsoft Teams Room component. This is what provides the control link between QSIS and the Teams Room compute device. But guess what? You don't need to worry about it because it's already in the schematic. But if you ever need to add this component to one of your own designs, you can add it from the inventory under peripherals. This component also provides monitoring information from the Microsoft Teams Room computer back into the QSIS environment, which means you can monitor the health of all your Microsoft Teams Room PCs with QSIS Reflect Enterprise Manager. Wait, what? Did somebody mention you can get a free trial available at www.qsc.com slash enterprise manager? Oh, that was me. Nailed it. All right, back to our sample design walkthrough. Step six introduces us to something called webhooks. This is an optional step that allows a system administrator to receive notifications if the approved QSIS design is altered or falls out of spec. Simply create a new webhook in Teams and copy this webhook code right here to enable these notifications. The final step in this setup process is the room optimization UCI for Teams rooms. This is a custom UCI that's built into the sample file that's intended to be opened on a mobile device in the room in question. And Patrick's still over there, so I'll let him tell you about it. Thanks. So now that the room is up and running, thanks to what Nate's done on his design, all that's left is to finesse it. As long as your system is on the same Wi-Fi network as your smartphone, you can access the special optimization UCI in this design from the palm of your hand which will guide you through some simple steps to optimize the audio flow for your specific space. You'll go through this friendly step-by-step -step guide by actually getting on a Teams call with someone else, which allows someone on the far end to help you verify and fine tune elements of the call quality. Once you're done, select the finish button and these optimized settings will be saved in your design. In fact, now that Patrick's done, my system status indicates that it's running with commissioned settings. And once again, this update will appear in my Microsoft Teams channel via the webhook. Finally, let's look at the UCI deployment within the Microsoft Teams Room console. Let's look at our Logitech tap, which is displaying that Microsoft Teams Room application. We can tap the options icon and then the room controls label to gain access to our UCI. It looks like it's a native interface to Microsoft Teams Room, and that is by design. But make no mistake, you are interacting with a QSIS UCI just the same way you might on a QSIS touchscreen. In fact, the version that I see inside QSIS looks noticeably more boring. But that's because we're applying a Microsoft theme that we've provided within this sample design file. It tells the display to reinterpret each object according to particular colors, fonts, and sizes that we've worked out to make each control look like it's native to the Microsoft Teams environment. So if you need to adjust this UCI, add or remove some controls, etc., you can specify which CSS class styles to apply to each control to keep that visual appearance seamless for the end user. Thanks, Thanks for watching, watching, and we'll see you next time. time.